Welcome to my living room. My name is Waylon Lewis uh, with Walk the Talk Show. Um, you don't need to hear about Walk the Talk Show. It's probably the most famous talk show, except for Oprah, who beats us month after month. But we're bigger than Letterman, bigger than uh, John, um, uh, the King guy. Anyway, uh, so we're back again. Welcome millions of live viewers and thousands of guests. Thank you so much for shilling out $50. It's amazing how badly people want to get in here. Um, tonight, we actually have a serious interview. Um, I'm going to be serious, at least. Uh, it's with my uh, childhood buddy, who I used to spend Thanksgivings with. She's a very sweet young lady, as you'll see. Um, uh, her name is Tashi King. And if, in watching this conversation, you feel inspired to help, to get involved, um, you can go to elephantjournal.com. You can search Tashi King and there will be many links and ways to get involved. So without further ado, Tashi King. Tashi. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Welcome to my living room. Thank you. It's actually the dining room, but we took out the table. Um, so... Uh, hmm. You and I, as I was mentioning, uh, spent many Thanksgivings together. I burned a desk down one time and didn't tell anyone until they figured yeah. it out. You didn't really hear about that, mm, did you? I'm curious It's a big now. thing in my childhood. It was traumatic. Hmm. My mom woke me up and said, did you burn a desk? And I said, no. It was like my first big lie. And then I had to stick with that. At my anyway, house. Anyway, let's talk about you. Okay. So... Um, you and I lost track. Maybe just fill us all in on your childhood, where you were born. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, well, I was born in Vermont, and I was adopted. My parents adopted me um, way back in 1975. Um, mm -hmm. and so at that means the time, 29. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> at the time, they were living um, communally in a Buddhist community in Vermont, and um, they're both studying under Chogyam Chungpa Rinpoche. And some years later, um, the community, or part of it, moved to Boulder, Colorado, and my parents moved, my brother and I, um, here to Boulder, um, where I grew up and went through the school system um, at, at about 18 decided I was done with Boulder and I was never coming back <laughs> and uh, moved to San Francisco. Um, Much cooler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought so. thought I was. Diversity. <laughs> Your departure single-handedly yeah. caused all of Boulder to not be at all diverse for the next <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, that was, that was my gripe. That was my gripe. But, um, but yeah, so I moved to the Bay Area and uh, spent about four years there and really enjoyed uh, my time there. Moved to Tahoe, did the ski bomb thing for a little bit and then mm -hmm. ended up going to school in Connecticut for a while. Um, studied psychobiology and chemistry there and did some work at Yale. Um, you did some work at Yale? Yeah, maternal uh -huh. deprivation and uh, uh -huh. subsequent uh, substance abuse behavior in rats. I was in charge of surgery, which it's um, a big problem with the rat community. <laughs> it was a problem for me. It kind of tore me up, and so at some point, actually, it was after nine eleven. Um, I was on the medical school path and decided I didn't want to put my book, my head in a book for um, at that time. So I packed my bags and I decided to travel around the world for mm. a year or so. And I understand you went to South America? Um, well, I ended up settling down in Nicaragua, mm -hmm. um, but in my travels I ended up, uh, oh gosh, like, you know, loping on the beach in India and getting pregnant and, yeah. On the beach? <laughs> Yeah, my let's let's uh, zero in on that. I'm really proud. But <coughs> uh -huh. Anyhow, um, I ended up settling down in Nicaragua because at the time I didn't feel... Um, I just really wanted to raise my child with 
a sort of broader world view at that time. And so um, ended up settling down in Nicaragua and um, had my daughter. And she was actually born with uh, Patau's syndrome or trisomy 13. And what is that? Um, it's a chromosomal abnormality. Um, it's a little bit like oh, Down syndrome. <laughs> um, every cell actually has an extra chromosome, so that extra genetic information interferes with midline formation at the first stages of development. So for her, she had a cleft lip and palate and um, gross malformations of her brain and heart defects and extra digits and you know, the list went on and on. Wow. So it was quite an amazing experience to have a child like that born in Nicaragua. And, um, and you had no warning, the doctors had no warning. Um, no, I had no idea at the time and luckily um, right before she was due, um, actually ate a bad watermelon and got really sick and ended up getting more um, care than I would have otherwise and luckily that happened because I don't think either of us probably would have survived my birth plan <laughs> as I initially had it um, staged but she um, did survive and we both survived that birth and then um, launched into um, yeah just an amazing life like I, I don't these children so often just have this incredible wisdom, and my daughter certainly did, and she was a really special little kiddo. And um, so I, for about a year and a half, um, cared for her primarily in Nicaragua, which was quite the challenge. And typically these children, kids with trisomy 13, um, it's said that about 10% will survive into their, like past their first year. So 90% of these kids, you know, these are statistics, so who knows, but most of these children don't survive their first year. And many only survive two weeks. Mm -hmm. And she lived for a while. Yeah, she was, um, I just lost her about a year and a half ago and she lived to almost be five. So it was for anyone really... who I only ran into a few times, but I've, I've heard from many uh, mutual friends, for anyone who knows Tashi, I mean, you can probably already tell the, the, it was a testament to sort of your love and your fierce love, I would think. Um, so that, you had quite an education, a sort of undergraduate degree in, <laughs> in life in navigating the healthcare system. You were, you were I thought me. so. I yeah. thought so. Um, yeah, we spent... You know, four months of the year in the hospital and, uh, um, you know, eventually then being a single mom of a kid like that. It was definitely a big education and she yeah. taught me a huge amount about life and love and, yeah, I miss her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, then you, I understand you went to Naropa University? Is that correct? Yeah, I'm actually still enrolled as a student. I yesterday uh -huh. just finished my last class after like three years. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I still have an internship and a thesis to write, but I've been studying dance movement therapy, and it's really fabulous. It's mm -hmm. really wonderful to focus on the body and in psychotherapy. Uh -huh. um, and that's been super valuable to be a part of that community during this period of my life. And uh, another wonderful, obviously, part of your life is that you met uh, and fell in love with an incredibly handsome young man. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Um, it's kind of a blur when I think about um, first, when I first met Brian, because I was sort of in this grieving stage. Um, having just lost my daughter. And I think I was really mean. <laughs> but um, he was incredibly patient and has been amazing and still is amazing as um, we face all these new adventures. Um, dated for not too long, a year, year and a half or something. And um, just, we were married just this last um, August. 
Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It's the really... photos are gorgeous. Thank you. And they're on elephantjournal.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had this big party behind our house and made everyone hike themselves up this mountain to witness our vows. And it was just like, it could not have been a more fantastic day. So.